okay, I'm going to do a video on how to import and export a prefab using Hal's editor and then using Pile's editor to actually edit it before I do the before I re-import it again. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new game just for shits and giggles. We're going to call it GUP2 since I've done this about 16 times so far. For whatever reason, something goes wrong. Either my OBS stops recording, whatever. Now this supposes you already have Hal's BBB commands installed and Pile's editor installed. Both of which are covered in separate videos, so deal with it. So, first thing I want to do is I want to come across a random graveyard, right? So, because I want to rip apart one grave out of a graveyard. That's my goal right now. Okay? One grave out of a graveyard. Alright. Ah, fucking Christ. I'm find some place that doesn't suck. Um, here looks good. Alright, this will work. It's just so ugly, though. Ooh, mountain. That didn't work out too well. Wow, yeah. Um, let's go back over here. There we go. This is nice and pretty. Alright, still no graveyard, though. That's fine. I'm just going to import one. Let me find one first. Let's call it church, right? Church underscore graveyard one. So the first thing I want to do when I first join a game is go to BBB, hit the chat, not the console, but the chat, and type BBB space RP. That gives me admin privileges to house editor, which is completely different than getting admin privileges to your server or in for your game or Windows or any other stupid shit. You need to make yourself admin and house editor first, which is what I just did. So then I'm going to go to, I'm going to randomly find a graveyard. Um, Look, there's a graveyard. I found one. Well, that didn't work out too well because it's too high. Um, so I'm going to sink it to the ground and then type that. Look, a graveyard. <laughs> anyway, what I want to do is I want to extract just one of these graves. So the first thing I really want to do is um, figure out what do I want to extract extract, like what pieces, right? And I'm going to use shower glass blocks. So I want, say, this grave right here, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide what I want to extract. I want everything from, let's see, here on in, here on in, here on in, to here. So I basically want everything that's inside this little circle here. Right? So I don't want these glass blocks, but I want everything inside the glass blocks, which will include this headstone, that piece of grass, that tree, this piece of grass, that sleeper, and that coffin. And then that's and all the dirt around it, right? So first I'm going to do is make a claim. BBB claim, I'm going to call it um, underscore grave. Then I'm going to go to BBB export underscore grave. Basically I claim the area for export, and I'm actually going to export the area. Yeah, I didn't like that. Oh, yeah, because I didn't type BBB, I typed BB. Alright, so now, as you can see in my 7 Days to Save, Navis Gang, GUP2, Block, Black Backup, blah, 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 basically, and here, and Block Backup, Users, your Steam ID, I have Grave, right? So that's what I'm actually going to load underscore grave. And the editor, file, load. And then I go all the way back to it, right? Do -do -do -do. Oh, look, there it is. Now, it loaded a very large area, much larger than I actually want. So I'm going to use a scroll button to kind of, I mean, this little slider here to kind of zoom in and out. And another thing it did is it loaded all the way from bedrock to sky in something called layers. So you have columns up and down rows, and then the sky to ground, layers. So there's three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, right? Layers being the Y. So first thing I want to do is I want to kind of trim it. So what I'm going to do now is using the scroll button up here, the, the mouse wheel scroll, I'm going to scroll till I actually find the church. There's, you know, dirt and all that kind of stuff. And I'll look some... Up here is what it is. This is dirt. And then uh, grave plus iron, gravel plus iron. Anyway, but these are the graves right here that I want, right? 
Remember, I had a specific one in mind, and it's surrounded by some shower blocks. If you look, when I highlight here, up here, it changes the shower block. I can click Info, and I can click, and it still says Shower Block, right? Shower Block, Shower Block, Shower Block. Remember, I wanted the stuff that's in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is highlighted. Right click, drag. Um, let's see, I'll include all these rows, all these columns, rather. And I'm going to remove columns. Now, if I remove rows, it's going to remove all those rows, but I'm going to remove columns. That includes that glass shower block, so I don't really want that in my prefab. Boom, done. Here's the other one. Right click, drag. I don't need to select them all, I only need, only need to select a representation of them. Um, move columns, done. And of course, it's going to crash. Son of a cock. Okay, trying again. Move columns. Okay, it actually did it at that time. Now it brought me back down below some layers, so I don't really want that. I want to keep on scrolling back up until I find it again. Okay, here's my upper glass block, my lower glass block. So now I'm going to, to basically highlight here, include that, and this time remove rows here and watch it crash. Okay, trying again. I'm going to remove, uh, let's see, this side here. Let's see, remove these rows. It's going to pop me back up to the highest layer. I want to find my blocks again. There they are right there. I'm going to go ahead and file save since I keep crashing a lot. Um, now I'm going to remove everything on this side, right? So, because remember I was focusing in on these little glass blocks that were in here. Um, remove the columns. Let's find my spot again. There it is. File save so it don't crash again. Highlight these and then remove rows and watch it crash. Trying again, highlighting it. Let's see, highlight. I'm going to delete. Let's see, all these rows. All right, so it finally actually worked this time. File save. I don't need to do that anymore. Um, it's a bug. He knows about it. He's going to fix it. I'm not too worried about it. But basically, it's tricky to remove rows and columns. Basically, save after each time. Um, so anyway, what I'm left with now is now I've actually gotten rid of all the excess side and, and front and back of my prefab. Now I need to get rid of the extra layers because if you remember right, it goes sky to bedrock. And so here's bedrock. See, it says bedrock up there going up, and it's stone going up. And then, you know, finally get to the air and where actual prefab's at. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to switch to side view. Side view is basically looking at it from the side. Now I'm no longer looking at it from top down. Scroll all the way hell out. So what I'm going to do first is get rid of a bunch of these air blocks. Because I don't want to, I don't want a lot of these air blocks. So with side view, it's going to be, let me file save again. Um, I'm going to highlight all the ones I want to delete. I'm going to make it just kind of above the, the prefab. And I'm going to again... Not remove columns, but remove the rows. And then same thing on the bottom. Let's see, I want to go like to here. And watch it crash. Okay, trying again. Uh, let's see, I want to remove, let's see, from bedrock and all this stone up here. Let's see, so about here sounds good. Not columns, but rows. Yay, it finally did it. File, save. Now, here's my top view. Right? So I have five layers high. I'm not worried about that. So basically when I'm looking down at it, and I'm, I'm flying in the sky, I'm looking down at it, I see the dirt. And then I move up a layer, and then I see the coffin, which remember extends to two blocks, so it fills up this airspace, so the coffin's really going to fit over here. Then on top of that, I've got the sleeper. Then on top of that, I've got where the grass is at. Here's the headstone, here's the grass diagonal, here's the grass diagonal, and I accidentally chopped off one column too many when I was doing the side cut, so I lost a little little tree bush. But that's fine. It should still work out pretty good. And above that's an air block and an air block. So one, two, three, and then dirt. Alright, so everything looks good. So it's called underscore grave, right? So go back into the game, and I'm going to spawn in underscore grave. Let's pick it right here, right? BBBIP underscore grave for import. Oh yeah, I forgot to copy it back over because it's still working out of this folder. 
I needed to work out of this folder, the game fo prefab folder. There, there's my grave. There's the whole prefab right there. You notice two things wrong. One, it spawned too high, and two, the sleeper is actually sitting there because he's a sleeper block and that actually registered as a sleeper. I'll tell you how to fix that. So first thing you want to do is say, okay, I really want that flush with the ground and that's three blocks, so I'm going to go ahead and make that three blocks. So first I'm going to get my coordinates. So I got 1350, minus 1350, 61, and 331. Minus 1350, 61, and shit, what was it? 331. But remember, I went at three blocks lower, so that's going to be 58. See? There we go. Now he's actually flush with the ground. Everything looks like a dory, except for that's still a sleeper, right? So that's because two things have been done. Go back to the prefab, find the sleeper layer, I'm going to add a new sleeper volume. There it is right there. I'm going to make the volume this big. It's going to have um, loot default small sounds good. Um, let's make it, I don't know, 10 high. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, sure, that sounds good. File, save. Oh, yeah, let me do the sleeper count. File, save. I don't know if that does anything. Now basically what I've done is I've updated this XML file here with the sleeper information. And now I'm going to copy that back over and this too, why not? Copy it over back to the prefab folder and overwrite the two existing folders, right? Now I can't just BBB import this thing because I'm going to be standing right on it and the sleeper may or may not fire. So I'm going to go ahead and get some more directions. 1356, 58, 324. Fifty-six. See him over there. That's first of all, just in case. See, no sleeper. Oh, well, I forgot to do the sleepers. Damn. Let's see if that actually works. Yeah. No sleeper, right? Did it fire? It didn't even fire. Let me try it on a different coordinate. Sleepers are done basically in chunks, and let me let me just leave the chunk and find a totally new chunk. This one sounds good. So I want 1364 and 277. 264, 277. Now, if this doesn't work, I give up because I can't get sleeper volumes to work right for the life of me, but I'm not too worried about it either because that's not the purpose of this video. All right, anyway, that's how you do things like that. And I don't see anything about the sleeper volume. Oh, I have it at this, this game has zombies turned off. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, that's how you insert a prefab or basically rip a graveyard out of a church graveyard. For shits and giggles, let's see if I can get that to spawn now. Triggered empty sleeper volume. That means it actually tried to trigger the sleeper volume, but it, the dice rolled up empty. Let's see if that works for the other ones. Triggered empty sleeper volume. Again, the dice roll failed. And that's just, like I said, a sleeper block, not a sleeper um, volume sleeper. So theoretically, this should have actually worked. Oh, look at these fuckers trying to get me, assholes. Um, but I, tri I went. It rolled the dice to see whether or not something would spawn. It said no both times. That's it. Cause I guess because I'm solo level.